Hi, my name is Sarah McDavid, owner of Terra Blue Celtic Witch and Drew. The store's original incarnation was actually a joint ownership between my brother and myself. My brother wanted, of all things, a Christmas store. Mm. <laughs> we put in all of our money, all of retirement, and he ran away. He left. So we decided to do what I thought would speak more to the community um, and what the community needed. So we uh, started converting slowly over to alternative spiritual practice, uh, which I've been practicing for years. Ago. So we cater to what a lot of people would refer to as witches. They are uh, people who honor the natural earth cycles. Um, so you would call them pagans. We also cater to Vudan practitioners, Santerias, root workers, uh, Celts, the, the Druids, um, Asatru, the Norse people, anyone who honors the deities and practices of 10,000 years ago versus 2,000 years ago. So, what happened was, <laughs> I've never had a really good um, job length history. And at the time I was out of a job and I had a friend of mine staying with me at my apartment. Um, and he said, Mindy, you're a tarot reader, go find a job as a tarot reader because I mean, this other stuff is not working for you. I said, but the universe says that I'm not supposed to charge for my art. You know, everybody says I'm not supposed to. He said, bullshit. <laughs> Excuse my language. Yes. But the universe gives you the tools to take care of yourself. So I went, I came downtown, and at the time, right down on Elm Street, there were two different shops, Eclectic Financial, which is the first one I found, and the first one I stopped at, and the lady in there comes swooping in, we don't need any more readers, we don't need any more readers, you need to go down the block. And she directed me here. Turns out it was Sarah's birthday the day that I got here, and Sarah's the owner. And uh, she hired me on the spot. I am a psychic medium. Um, at one point in time, during my work life in fundraising and sales, I realized I hated it. I said, I'm going to start my own business. And my background, um, educational-wise, is in psychology, so I've always wanted to help people. Um, but I didn't want to be a traditional psychologist, and I also had this other thing about singing and speaking to dead people, so <laughs> I was like, okay, how can I combine this? Um, but anyway, I decided I wanted to be a spiritual life coach, and I literally ran, I guess, well not ran, I looked in the phone book, well not really phone book, but Google, I guess, nowadays, um, and tried to find a place that was open to this kind of thing, and so I just walked in, and I said, hey! Are you the store owner? <laughs> and as we were talking, she said, okay, yeah, come on in. You can start doing readings here. And so then that evolved into me making my own products and putting them in the store for sale. Um, and that's where I am now, I guess. And this is a place where people who are feeling down can come to feel better. This is a place where part of my job is quote unquote counseling quote unquote counseling where we counsel people who are not doing well into being happier people or people who feel forlorn and love lost and oh my god uh, to start loving themselves instead of chasing after that man you know what I'm saying it is like a family it really is and I don't say that to sound cliche um, it really is. We embrace each other. We know that we all have different spiritual paths, but we all know that the ultimate path is to feel that oneness that connects us all. And so that's what brings us together. You know, everything was going good. It was kind of different because I usually have someone there, you know, helping me because when I'm on the other side, it's kind of hard to keep track of where I'm going. Um, but she wasn't there, my friend that was in here that came outside. And so there were a whole bunch of people that were really trying to talk to me. It was a mother and a daughter, right? Trying to talk to them. And I'm trying to push people to the side. I'm like, okay, this person is coming through, you know, et cetera. And then this one energy really just pushed their way through, turned on my speakers, and just 
almost literally tried to enter the back of my body and I was like, whoa, oh. we're not doing possession oh today. <laughs> what is it that you need to say? <laughs> and I will translate that to you. <laughs> but um, that was the most recent. That was the most recent. I read death falls. I see people when they're crossover. I've seen the attendants attend them. Um, and there's always two of them, and they're always dressed in white to me, and they're always talking. That's why people chipper when they're when they're in their last days because they're actually they're not just talking to the air, they're talking to the attendants who are there to foster them on to the higher plane. Um, my belief systems are really weird. I don't know that there's something really wicked weird because to me this is normal. This is what I do. I put my hands on people and I lift their energies and I'm kind of a healer, kind of a spiritual healer. I can jump into any circle and become the priestess. It's ridiculous. So it's innate with me. So I, I can't say that they're strange or weird. Although, since Charlie died, he likes to come over here and say, hey miss, can you help me? And then I look around and there's nobody there. But you know, <laughs> other than that, you know. But it's fun and it's okay. And even when it's scary, it's still okay. Because it's what is spiritually supposed to be happening.